These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. What type of functional group is this? I, I mean... Yeah, it is an amine. What type of functional group is this? Uh, alcohol. Okay, let's compare their basicity. Now, first of all, do you remember, do bases donate electrons or receive electrons? That's a very important idea that unfortunately most people can't remember. So, can you remember, do bases donate or receive they donate electrons? That's right. You might just think of hydroxide. Obviously, hydroxide is a base, but it wants to donate electrons. So in general, the Lewis base definition of a base is somebody who wants to donate electrons. However, amines are better bases than alcohols. They're not strong bases like hydroxide, but they're a better base than alcohol. Can you think of a reason why this amine would be a better base than an alcohol? Because it has a lone pair. Of course, the alcohol has a lone pair, too. Okay. Um, because it's more electronegative. Who is more electronegative? Actually, the oxygen is, isn't it? That's right. And does that make the oxygen more or less willing to donate electrons? Uh, less willing to donate uh, uh, electrons. Which makes it a good base or a poor base. Poor base. Okay, so you actually were on the right track there. Now, remember that what we're doing here is comparing two different elements. Sure. So we should either focus on their size or their electronegativity. But how do we know we should focus on their electronegativity here and not their size? Well, are these in the same row or the same column? Nitrogen and oxygen. Do you remember from the periodic table? They're in the same row. Right. Well, I think maybe we've had the chance to talk in the past. When elements are in the same row, the key difference is their electronegativity. If they were in the same column, we would focus on their size. But in the same row, we focus on electronegativity. Well, this is less electronegative, which means it's more willing to donate electrons, which makes it the better base. Not a strong base, but much better than an alcohol. If this does gain a proton, it would look like this and have a positive charge. And then we would call it not an amine, but an ammonium. So this would be an ammonium. So remember how we talked about how Carboxylic acids really have two different forms, protonated and non-protonated. That's neutral and negative because they're acids. Well, there's a very similar idea for amines. Since amines are bases, they have two different forms, protonated and non-protonated. But because they're bases, their two forms are neutral and positive. Okay. Carboxylic acids are neutral and negative, but the two forms here are neutral and positive. Remember how when you were doing problems with carboxylic acids, I said, at the end of any problem with a carboxylic acid, if you produce a carboxylic acid, you have to decide whether it should be in its protonated or deprotonated form based on whether you're under acidic or basic conditions. Well, you have to get into the same habit for amines. You have to decide whether they should be protonated or deprotonated. In neutral or basic conditions, it would be unprotonated. Okay. But in acidic conditions, it would be the positive protonated form. Now here's two different amines. Do you happen to remember what the name for this is? We talk, this is one of the common names we talked about yesterday. Aniline? Oh, that's good. You got that memorized already. Very good. Yeah, this is called aniline, an amine group on benzene. Now it turns out that this amine is less basic than this one over here. Can you come up with any reason? Uh, which one's less basic? The aromatic one. This is less basic. Can you think of any reason why this would be less basic? Any reason why this would be less willing to donate electrons? Um, well, it's less willing to donate electrons because it can, although it's not as electronegative as oxygen, it can spread the charge throughout the ring, so it's pretty happy with uh, having the, um, having, 
So it's pretty content. It's not going to want to give it. Well, uh, let's see here. That's uh, no, that's not. Uh, you were really on the right track there. Um, let's just use one more word. What? What? How can it spread its uh, electrons? Through resonance. resonance. That's right. Yeah. By the way, what types of things make good bases? Positive things or negative things? Negative things. Okay. Now let's draw another resonance structure here. You were right that this could donate its electrons to the ring, like this. Now it, becomes positive. it would become positive. Nothing that has a resonance structure with a positive charge is going to be a very good base. Anything that has a resonance structure with a positive charge isn't going to be a very good base, because bases tend to have negative charges. This doesn't have a full positive because it, there's only, it only has the positive charge in some resonance structures, but even that is going to make it much less basic. That actually is going to turn out to be very important when you briefly go into amino acids and peptides after the midterm. So if there's a resonance structure where something has a positive charge, it's not going to be that great a base. In fact, there's a bunch of resonance structures where this has a positive charge because I could also move the negative charge over here, and this would still have a positive charge. And then I could move the negative charge over here, and this would still have a positive charge. So there's many resonance structures where this has a positive charge, which makes it much uh, less basic. So again, even if you're not specifically asked to draw a resonance structure on your exam, drawing resonance structures can be a very useful thought step to figure out what the answer is to the problem that you're working on. That's the whole theme of the whole term, using resonance to explain things. Incidentally, then this would be called an aromatic amine. So do aromatic amines tend to be more or less basic than normal amines? They're less basic. Right. Now, it would be nice if we had a word that meant something that's not aromatic. Uh, now, there is a word for that. It's aliphatic. You might have seen this in the notes or in the lecture notes. Aliphatic basically means not aromatic. Mm -hmm. It's just not an aromatic compound. Okay. So um, this is what we would call an aliphatic amine. But it doesn't have to be on a ring. This is also aliphatic. Okay. Anything that doesn't, is not on an aromatic ring is aliphatic. So aliphatic is just everything that's not aromatic for the most part. So what we've seen is that aliphatic amines are more basic than aromatic amines because they don't have resonance structures where the nitrogen has a positive charge. Let's say I add a nitro group to the benzene ring. Is this nitro group going to make the amine more or less basic? It's going to make it less basic. That's the right answer. How does the nitro group make it less basic? Because the nitro molecule has a big fat positive charge. So and um, and um, there's already a resonance structure where you have an aniline without the nitro group with a positive charge on the nitrogen. So mm -hmm. um, that's basically right. That's basically right. Let's look at it in a slightly different way. Is this nitro group electron donating or withdrawing? It's withdrawing. Would that tend to make this more or less basic? Remember that a base is somebody who donates electrons to a completely different molecule. But if the electrons are getting pulled towards the nitro group, they're not going to be donated to a, com to a completely different molecule. I think that's kind of what you were going towards there, but maybe a slightly simpler way to put it. Electron withdrawing groups make compounds less basic. And simply by, um, basically this nitro group wants to keep the electrons in the molecule. It doesn't want them to be donated to a different molecule. An electron donating group would make this more basic. An electron donating group here would make this more basic by trying to push the electrons off. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is 
www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.